Hi everyone, uh, my name is Francesco Prada. I'm a neurosurgeon uh, working at the Carlo Best Institute in Milan in Italy. I uh, will be talking about the concept, the mechanism of action and the preclinical and clinical application of uh, sonodynamic therapy for uh, treating glioblastoma. When we refer in the realm of uh, ultrasound mediated treatments, when we talk about sonodynamic therapy, we talk about uh, low intensity, uh, low frequency treatment. And uh, the idea is that to uh, provide the patient uh, with a chemical non-toxic non sensitizing agent, uh, which will be activated uh, using uh, ultrasound uh, energy. The idea uh, was already applied using the light uh, in photodynamic therapy. Uh, and the most uh, uh, renowned uh, application is, for, for example, the use of 5LA for uh, melanoma. However, the light doesn't have a deep penetration within tissues. Whereas uh, ultrasound, especially low frequency ultrasound, uh, can uh, penetrate uh, um, tissues uh, more effectively and it can penetrate even the skull. So the, it, this can be employed for glioblastoma treatment. Um, what happened uh, during the interaction with the sensitizing agent, which is harmful per se, and the ultrasound? Basically, <clears throat> the, there are many theories. For sure, uh, there is uh, um, interaction between uh, the ultrasound, a uh, uh, sort of microcavitation that uh, uh, excitates the sensitizers and um, generating reactive uh, oxygen species and uh, the same uh, ultrasound uh, uh, mechanical effects can induce uh, other uh, tissue specific uh, uh, effects. So the generation of reactive oxygen species uh, for sure is um, one of the um, main, uh, main biological effects exerted by sonodynamic therapy. Uh, they can occur either by pyrolysis or sonoluminescence. The idea is that the microcavitation generates light deep in the tissue, uh, activating uh, this agent, which are, as we saw, photosensitive. But the mechanical effects also are able to induce uh, um, an anti-angiogenetic mechanism. And also they are able to uh, modulate uh, um, the uh, immune system within the tumor microenvironment. For example, they uh, force the tumor to expose uh, antigens, and also they are able to reverse the inhibition that the tumor is able to exert on the immune system. Different sensitizers have been uh, tested uh, for sonodynamic therapy. They are mainly dyes, uh, either porphyrin-based or xanthan uh, dyes. They in common, they have that they accumulate selectively in the tissue, so we don't have a hyperaccumulation in the surrounding structures. And also, they are harmful per se. They need uh, to interact with the ultrasound to be, uh, to be activated. Many different uh, kinds of sensitizers have been tested uh, preclinically for uh, glioblastoma treatment. Um, we are focalizing our attention, they prove effective, um, but we're focalizing our attention to, towards those that are already uh, used uh, in, uh, in a clinical setting, such as 5-aminolevolenic uh, acid, 5-LA, indocyanine green, and uh, um, fluorescent. Here you can see a couple of examples, 5-LA on the left and fluorescent uh, on the right. Um, while well, they're used to highlight uh, glioblastoma intraoperatively. They have two different uh, mechanisms. 5LA is a, a protoporphyrin uh, precursor. Uh, it is uptaken uh, um, selectively by, by glioblastoma cells because they have a higher uh, metabolism. Uh, it is uh, uh, turn into protoporphyrin 9. And as you can see, when, um, 
we use a certain wavelength, we can highlight only the tumor tissue under the microscope, and this can guide the surgery. The use of 5LA in conjunction with solid dynamic therapy was uh, first uh, tested in, and proved to be effective by the Japanese group led by Dr. Professor Umemura. And they clearly showed that uh, uh, solid dynamic therapy with uh, 5LA is effective in reducing uh, the tumor size. This was confirmed also using a, a clinical system, the Insitec system, by Professor Kobayashi, who was in uh, Japan, and they did so testing uh, um, solid dynamic therapy both in vitro and uh, in vivo. Whereas recently, uh, the Toronto group proved that uh, um, hyperthermia, uh, they, they proved that 5LA is effective in, in, in killing glioblastoma cells in, uh, in vivo, but, uh, and hyperthermia doesn't play a major role uh, into this. Sodium fluorescein um, is another dye that is used for uh, surgical guidance, for fluorescein, um, fluorescence and surgical guidance. The um, mechanism by which it accumulates selectively uh, in the tumor is different. Uh, it uh, extravasates uh, in the, uh, through the blood-brain barrier, which is uh, um, not impermeable uh, in the brain tumors. What is interesting about fluorescein is that uh, um, it, that it are highlights not only glioma, but uh, it is able to highlight many different other histotypes. So this can uh, open the, pave the way to uh, more, even more application of sonodynamic therapy. Um, this is a study where fluorescent was tested, actually probably the, the sole study where fluorescent proved effective in uh, killing uh, glioma cells. And the setting here was uh, um, a C6 uh, glioma subcutaneous model in rats, uh, but with, uh, it is uh, pretty uh, straightforward to see how the um, solid therapy with fluorescein was able to um, decrease tubo size. Uh, this is another study, a safety study that uh, we performed in uh, Charlottesville, Charlottesville with the support of the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. And the idea was to test uh, whether uh, solid dynamic therapy was harmful to the normal brain. So um, this was, study was performed uh, in a large animal model in pigs. Uh, animals were uh, given, uh, were administered with a, a clinical dosage of 5LA and fluorescent prior to sonications. And we sonicated uh, two targets in uh, two large areas in uh, two different uh, brain areas. And we didn't see any sign, uh, either early or late uh, sign of damage, either on uh, uh, the MRI or in the, in the normal brain, in the, in, on histopathology. In conclusion, uh, solenic therapy with 5LA and fluorescein is effective uh, in glioma preclinical models. Uh, it's harmful to the normal brain and it's a safe and feasible treatment option for brain tumors and the uh, workflow we studied in the pigs uh, showed that it is uh, possible to move to humans. It is still, there are um, the studies should be, more studies should be, investigation should be performed into understanding uh, the optimal parameters. Um, as I said, from uh, the bench were moving to to bedside, and there are uh, worldwide two trials so far um, approved for uh, to to perform solid therapy in uh, glioblastoma patients. One uh, will be will starting soon in uh, Milan in uh, de novo glioblastoma prior to resection, while whereas another one has already been approved and started already in uh, Phoenix. And uh, Dr. Sana will talk about this uh, after me. Uh, thank you for your attention.